Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to investigate gravity. Specifically, we're going to find out if an object is moving, does gravity act differently on that object than if the object were not moving at all? And in order to do that, I've got a very dangerous weapon here, a suction cup crossbow here. We're going to go outside, we're going to do lots of shots outside to see how gravity affects moving objects. Now before we go outside and start shooting these styrofoam bullets, let's see what happens inside without the motion getting involved in complicating things. So let's see how things fall in gravity. Here we have uh, a little scale here. And so here is a uh, US nickel coin here, which is reading around five grams. So five grams of mass exerts the force of what the scale is measuring here. So let me put that off to the side. And then here we have uh, another coin, this is a penny, so it's only two grams. So this five gram uh, compared to this two grams, this has a, a force of gravity pulling down on the nickel of over two times the amount of force pulling on the penny. So if you drop them both at the same time, let's see what's going to happen. All right, here we go. Penny versus nickel, three, two, one, drop. Now, curiously enough, even though the force of gravity is pulling down on this nickel more than two times the amount of force as what is acting on this penny, it turns out that they hit the ground more or less at the same time. Of course, one hits slightly before the other, but that's just because I can't drop it perfectly. Also, the angle of that camera is a little bit uh, tilted, so it may not look that I'm holding them uh, level, but I'm doing my best to hold them at the same height. Let's increase the weight of the other object and see what happens to how these things fall in gravity. Okay, so we had our five gram nickel. This is a paper clip, which isn't even reading on the scale. So whatever it is, it's less than one gram. This is not a very scientific scale, so less than one gram. Okay, nickel versus paper clip. Three, two, one, drop. Interesting. So the paperclip and the nickel actually hit the ground at the same time as well. Let's see what else I have in my little bag of goodies. I have a ping pong ball, very, very light, but also very uh, has a lot of volume, somewhere between two and three grams. All right, so let's go over here and drop these. Three, two, one, drop. So clearly the pattern is that everything that we have dropped so far, no matter if they have differing weights, are hitting the ground more or less at the same time to within the accuracy of what we can do here on the tabletop. So you might say, well, that's not true. I've seen plenty of times when things don't hit the ground at the same time. The most famous might be a feather or a balloon or something like that. So let's try each of these. Here we have a, a piece of styrofoam, just a flat piece of styrofoam. If I put it on there, again, it's not even weighing anything. Of course, we know it has at least some weight, so it's less than one gram. So let's go and do those. Okay, three, two, one, drop. Now that one was a little bit different. So you say, aha, we found an example of two objects that don't hit the ground at the same time. But what we're gonna find is we continue dropping heavier and heavier objects, but what we're gonna find here is that everything will hit the ground at the same time, provided that it's not very spread out and catching a lot of air. All right, next, let's go with a piece of paper. This paper has a mass of, looks like six grams. If we remember, the nickel was about uh, four, it was reading five grams uh, earlier. So between four and five grams, this paper actually has a, a higher force of gravity than the nickel. All right, nickel versus paper, three, two, one, So we can see the same rule. Because the paper is very broad and flat, it can catch a lot of air and slow down by air resistance. That's the only reason that it doesn't hit the ground at the same time. In order to demonstrate that, if I take the same piece of paper, the same paper, and instead of allowing it to be broad and flat, I'm going to crumple it up as tight as I can. Same mass, right? Mass is the same. I didn't take any atoms away. In fact, we can put it back on the on the balance here on the scale, and we can see uh, 
right around six, what it was uh, measuring before. All right, paper take two, three, two, one, drop. So you can see same mass, the only thing we changed was the cross-sectional surface area. So it doesn't catch as much air resistance. And of course, in that case, it hit the ground at the same time as well. Let's go to everybody's favorite, which is a feather. Let's see what this feather, what the mass of this feather is. It's not even registering. So it's something less than a gram. All right, feather versus nickel, three, two, one, drop. A feather has a very large surface area compared to its mass or its weight. And so as it falls down, it's encountering a lot of air resistance. That's the only reason it doesn't hit the ground at the same time. In fact, astronauts that went to the moon actually dropped a feather on the surface of the moon along with a hammer. And the result was that these two objects on the surface of the moon actually do hit the ground at the same time. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? All right, we're working our way up to shooting these things. I really want to see what happens when we put a forward velocity on something. But before we do that, let's have a little fun with something much heavier. So this nickel, just to remind you, around five grams, this is a steel ball, I'll try to keep it from rolling off, somewhere around 530 grams. Much, much heavier. You can just hear it, listen. Very, very heavy. All right, nickel versus steel ball, three, two, one, drop. All right, so this thing has a very hefty weight difference compared to the nickel. I mean, when I hold it in my hand, it's got some mass to it. But notice that even something with a very different mass of the nickel hits the ground at the same time. And if you do this experiment very precisely with letting it go at exactly the right height, exactly the right time, you will find out that it's not just close, it's, it's exactly hitting the ground at the same time. But before you answer it, I have an even bigger steel ball. This one is actually difficult to hold in my hand. Let's see what the mass of this thing is. The other one was 500 and something grams. This one is 1800 grams, very hefty. I mean, you can, you can listen to how that sounds. Let's drop these two. All right, here we go. Nickel versus heavy steel ball. Three, two, one, drop. All right, the heaviest object I have in here is a 10 pound barbell, which is about four and a half kilograms, 4.5 kilograms, so over 4,000 grams, quite hefty and hard to hold up. Three, two, one. All right, now it's really weird. We think of things as having different weights. And I think subconsciously, all of us know that heavier objects are pulled to the ground with a stronger force. And we throw things and drop things all the time, but the first time that you actually do this, one pair of objects next to another, it's kind of astounding that a really heavy object like that, even if I grab a bowling ball or, or even anything, a car, I could put a car in a crane and drop it, and neglecting air resistance, they will hit the ground at the same time. Why is that the case? If the heavy object is pulled down harder, why doesn't accelerate down uh, more and hit the ground first? We're gonna answer that today. But before we do that, I want to turn our attention to what happens when we shoot a projectile out at a velocity. Does gravity act the same or does gravity act on moving objects differently? So here we have this little toy gun here and we have these little styrofoam bullets which can go inside of it. And what I've done is I've taken one of them and I've put this paper clip through so that I can kind of hook it on there. And so the reason I'm doing that is so that I can put it in the gun and I can suspend another one of these darts down below like this. And so what's gonna happen is as I shoot a dart out, then what's going to happen is this dart is going to shoot out and then this one is going to drop as soon as this one leaves the barrel. And so we're going to get a direct comparison to a curved trajectory flying very fast one direction compared to uh, the same mass bullet, I mean they're pretty close to the same, falling down straight down. So one moving horizontally, but of course it's going to start to curve down, and then another one going straight down. What do you think is going to happen? Based on what we've seen today, do you think they're going to hit the ground at the same time or not? Let's find out. 
Here we shoot the bullets over different distances of length, starting with shorter distances and moving our way to farther distances. And we find out that every single time, both bullets hit the ground at exactly the same time. I don't know about you, but every single time I look at this, it's still amazing that it actually happens this way. It works this way because no matter how much horizontal velocity you have, gravity is always acting in the down direction, and it's pulling you down at the same acceleration no matter how fast horizontally you're moving. We say that gravity is a vector, which means it has a magnitude or a strength and also a direction associated with it. I wanted to verify this effect at longer ranges outside. You can see it was really difficult to hold the bow exactly level, and of course the wind and air resistance played an effect, but in general both bullets hit the ground pretty close to the same time. Alright, now I'm going to give you the executive summary as to why this happens. It's really, really incredible. Not only do any two objects with differing masses hit the ground at the same time, even though one is being pulled down harder, but if you take one of the objects, either one, and throw it horizontally, it will still hit the ground at the same time as an object dropped sta from a stationary point of view, uh, no matter how fast horizontally it has traveled. Theoretically, even firing a bullet and dropping a bullet, they will theoretically hit the ground at the same time, although air resistance obviously changes the result. On the moon, they absolutely would hit the ground at the same time. Now the executive summary as to why this happens is that there are really two kinds of mass in physics, really. One of them is called the gravitational mass. That's the mass in grams that we use to calculate the force of gravity. And then we have another kind of mass in physics which governs the inertia of the object. How hard is it to get an object moving? And that one's called the inertial mass. Now we have two kinds of masses, but you probably are saying, well, I never heard of two kinds of masses. This guy's crazy. Well, it turns out that in our universe, these two kinds of masses, which are totally different in different types of equations, they actually turn out to be the same quantity in our universe. The gravitational mass, which governs the force of gravity, and the inertial mass, which governs how hard it is to get things moving, how much inertia it has, are the same quantity for our universe and with matter that we can interact with. And because of that, any two objects will uh, hit the ground at the same time. Because even though you drop the two objects, the heavier object is being pulled down harder. That is true, with a higher force, true. But that object that weighs more, that has more mass, also takes a, has a harder time getting started because it has more inertia. So it's being pulled down, uh, being pulled down with a greater force. This barbell is being pulled down with a greater force, but when I let it go, it is more difficult to get this thing moving than a marker. This marker is being pulled down with a less force of gravity, but it is easier to get moving. And those two ideas cancel out. So even though this is being pulled harder, it's it's more difficult to get it moving, and this guy's being pulled less, and it's easier to get it moving, so they cancel out exactly, and the two objects always hit the ground at the same time. Now, how did it work when we were shooting the bullet? The thing you gotta remember is that all of these forces are called vectors. They have a direction and a, a strength, a magnitude. So whenever I take an object, like that bullet right here, right, that little Nerf bullet, and I shoot it this way, we draw a little arrow for its velocity, we all know that it's going to curve down, right, like this, and you can continue, you know, down like this. What is happening at every single instance of time is the velocity, we put a little arrow telling me the velocity is a directional thing going this way, but gravity doesn't act horizontally. It doesn't, it acts down. So the object is here, gravity is acting down. It, and the object is now here, the gravity is acting down acting down, acting down, acting down. It's always acting in a direction different than the actual direction of the velocity. So you need to start to think when things are moving that the the uh, the direction that gravity is acting is always down. It's only gonna affect the downward motion. The left to right horizontal motion is not affected. So we think that when we shoot things, it will delay them hitting the ground, but actually we see that that's not true because gravity is still pulling it down the same amount of meters per second and it hits the ground at the same time. All that's going to happen is the motion, instead of being a straight line as it would be in space, it's going to begin to curve down because gravity is pulling it down a little it each time. And we can see that by dropping it with an object that's not moving horizontally, they will always hit the ground at the same time. 
That's because gravity is a vector. It's acting down. The motion is not down. The motion is horizontal. Those two directions are 90 degrees apart and totally independent of one another. That is a way I want you to think about things. Vectors that are acting in different directions are completely independent of each other and act on the object completely independently. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned something. I encourage you to grab objects and start dropping them. Get a little Nerf gun, try to shoot it, see what you can find out. Please drop me a line, let me know what you think, leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.